observing the times, our salvation is near. Yeah. Used to be blind, now I see it so clear. Yeah. Observing the times, my salvation is near me. To the Romans, brethren. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And that's when we saw it. Cloudy when our cherry is coming, we out. If you bout it, white robes in the closet, redeeming my body. That's already done. I shot like the star with my brothers, my God is the sun. I keep them calm. That was finished before the first minute when all is begun. The sky might fall, but the prophets we still living on. Prophesying about destruction to come. I just want to write all of my wrongs. These are the end times, so I had to seek them ten times. The onslaught from the bomb drop got me praying I don't miss the deadline. In the trunk of a nine, falling stars losing back to the sky. Fire falling in the well to high. He was talking, but don't want to lie. My king come to set up the kingdom. Match it all like he pressing the wine. Free dumb from the clutches of eight dumb. Please, cause I don't want to die. It's, it's, it's getting cloudy. When our chariots come, then we out. If you bout it, white robes in the closet, redeeming my body, that's already done. I shot like a star with my brothers, my God is the sun. That keep them calm. That was finished before the first minute when all this began. I know that they hate me. Chariots come swinging, my Lord come and save me. Look at the vessel, my Lord came and gave me. He came with the army, ain't talking no navy. Damn, trying in that sea, getting wavy. Damn, ain't no more running to safety. Damn, all of this power that run through my body, there's no way that they can detain me. The me get the blessing. Guys in the building, we kicking like Tekken. Want the reward, so I'm kingdom invested. Snapping like Thanos in different dimensions. It's truly a blessing. Chosen by God, hope you paying attention. Ain't no more pain in a day of redemption, at least for the one that he called the election. It's, it's getting cloudy. When our chariots come, to we out. If you bout it, white robes in the closet, redeeming my body, that's already done. I shot like a star with my brothers, my God is the sun. I keep them calm. That was finished before the first minute when all is he done. As I said before, we'd always read this day of atonement. He warned us to be standing here now. The feeling you only know. I want to see the city of God and all his angels. The angels can stand at the gate so you can't break through. And this is ours for the sake too. All we got to do is seek his face and put our faith in Jesus. Please don't leave so we so ready for the take too. Make them swallow their pride, tell them this ain't true. And as we rise for the late view, they'll never tear us down from the place we escape to. With you, this is where I want to be. All right, let's rise and face Jerusalem.
Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. The book of Sirach, chapter 36 and verse 1. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations, and let them see thy power. As thou wast sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us. And let them know thee, as we have known thee, that there is no God but only thou, O God. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short, remember the covenant, and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire, and let them perish that oppress the people. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say, There is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together, and inherit thou them as from the beginning. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name, and upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. O be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Sion with thine unspeakable oracles, and thy people with thy glory. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning, and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Reward them that wait for thee. And let thy prophets be found faithful. O Lord, hear the prayer of thy servants according to the blessing of Aaron over the people. That all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal God. Heavenly Father, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, O Father, we come before thee, O Father, asking that you forgive us of our sins and our transgressions, O Father. Have mercy upon thy people, O Father, which is called by thy name, O Father. As we come before you, O Father, in remembrance of the Feast of Purim, O Father, for the glorious work you did in delivering our forefathers from that wicked hand, that wicked demon, Haman, O Father, we give all honor and glory unto thee, O Father, that thy name may be magnified and glorified throughout all the four corners of the earth, O Father. We ask, O Father, that you continue to have mercy upon us, O Father. Those that are weak among us, we ask that you strengthen them, O Father. Those that are sick among us, O Father, we ask that you heal them, O Father. Send your angels to encamp around those, O Father, that fear thee, O Father. Put a hedge of protection around them, O Father. Those that are going out to war to camp, O Father, for the souls of thy people, O Father, we ask that you protect them, O Father. Have mercy upon them, O Father, and deliver us, O Father, from this captivity, O Father. Deliver us, O Father. From, from this captivity, from this oppressor, O oh Father, that seek to destroy us, O oh Father. For they have said, come, let us cut thy people off from being a nation, O oh Father, that the name of Israel may be no more remembered, O oh Father. Have mercy upon us, O oh Father. Have mercy and deliver us, O oh Father. In thy son Jesus the Christ's name we pray and we thank thee, O oh Father, thanking thee always for all things. Amen. All praises, all praises. Are right, we in there? Hey, shalom, Israel, most high in Christ, bless. Happy Feast of Purim, happy Sabbath. Coming to you live, I am Captain Azariah with the AM class. Today's title is Faith Cometh by Hearing and Hearing by the Word of God. So, we're going to get right into it. Uh, make sure you're taking notes, as always. Get your pad, your pencil, your paper. Take notes, take notes. Because, matter of fact, that's what I'm going to talk about in this class. <laughs> it's some of you brothers that don't study, don't take notes. Because a lot of times we forget what strengthens and what builds our faith. So, all right, let's start in the book of Mark, the th uh, fourth chapter in the 13th verse. We've read this many a times. The parable of the sower going into the four types of Israelites there are in this walk. But we're going to touch it again today. Uh, give me Mark chapter 4, start at verse 13. Yes, sir. The book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 13. Come on. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? So he's referring to the parable he stated up and above in the uh, uh, chapter where he, matter of fact, let's start. Let's read it. Uh, start at verse 3. The book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 3. Come on. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. There went out a sower to sow. Read. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. So he's making reference to someone going out sowing seed. 
uh, a sore sold. He said, uh, and it came to pass as he sold, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Read on. And some fell on stony ground. Come on. Where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Come on. But when the so the sun- seeds the spring up, uh, but it immediately withered because it had no root, it had no depth in the earth. Read on. Verse 6. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no, because it had no root, it withered away. Mm, come on. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other, and other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he, and he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He that hath ears, he that hath understanding to hear, let him understand. So that's the parable that he's making reference to when you jump down to 13. So jump back down to 13. Verse 13. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? Come on. The sower soweth the word. So it says the sower soweth the word. That seed represented the word of God. Read. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. So now verse 15, this is that first type of Israelite. It says, and these are they by the wayside. Read. Where the word is sown. Where the word is sown. Come on. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. And taketh away the word that was sown and in the And a lot hearts. of times, we see this a lot of time at camp or when you're teaching somebody, here it is, you're sowing the word, you bring bringing it out to them, and here comes Satan immediately. They sitting in the camp, they listening, they understanding, Deuteronomy 28 coming out, next thing you know, they phone will ring, they get pulled away, or some distraction comes. That's that first type of Israel. It says, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that is sown in their hearts. Hearts. We see that time and time again when we at camp, when we dealing with certain people, whether it's uh, outside of our job, we out, people are asking about our fringes, things of that nature. We see these things and immediately some type of distraction that comes up, uh, something comes up and pulls them away. Well, watch this. That's that first type of Israelite, but watch this. Read on. Verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Now, this is that second type of Israelite. It says, these are they likewise which are st- sown on stony ground. Watch this read. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Now, I, n- I know we here in Mark 4, we're going we to get to the, to the, to the, uh, uh, the topic at hand because all this is going to be touching the topic. Just bear with me. Read verse 16 again. Verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. So it says, these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Read. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So they hear the word. They they hear the understanding that they are Israelite, Deuteronomy 28, and they got to keep God's commandments. And immediately what? Read. Receive it with gladness. They receive it with gladness. They come in. They repent. They start getting their lives together. They come in. They come in the doors. They keep in the Sabbath. They put uh, they uh, take off uh, the pants, put a dress on, stop eating pork, put fringes on their clothes. Watch this. It says they receive it with gladness. Read. Verse 17. And have no root in themselves. It says, and have no root in themselves. Read. And so endure but for a time. So they endure for a time. So watch this. I want to touch on that root because it's that second type of Israelite. And even the third type of Israelite we're going to deal with. But that's many. This right here is many of us that come in. And it's going to be many of us that come in here because that's a part of your faith being weak. Read verse 16 again. Verse 16. No, no, no. Verse Verse 17. 17. I'm sorry. Verse 17. And have no root in themselves. And have no root in themselves. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 17. Have no root in themselves themselves watch this give me jeremiah 17 start at verse 8 about have no root in themselves what is that talking about the book of jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 8 for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters matter of fact start up at mm, start at verse 7 verse 7 Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. So the scriptures say, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. Read. And whose hope the Lord is. And whose hope the Lord is. Come on. For he shall be as a tree planted. This type of brother, this type of man, this type of sister shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Read. And that spreadeth out her roots and by the And that out her what? Her roots. Her roots. Come on. By the river. By the river. Read. 
and shall not see when heat cometh. And shall not see with heat cometh. Read. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding Neither fruit. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So what does it mean, uh, a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots? Give me pro, uh, Psalms 1. Give me Psalms 1. Start at verse 1. Still going into that have no root. Give me Psalms 1. So it says, uh, uh, a man that put his, his trust in the Lord and maketh the Lord his hope, he shall be as a tree planted by the water whose roots spreadeth forth. So you got to you gotta imagine and visualize that a tree planted by the water. When a tree is first, when a tree is first planted, it don't immediately have roots. Because you got to think about a full grown tree. When you examine the roots, it's long. Can, can y'all able to get an image of like just a tree? You, you probably can search it. If not, it's fine. Of a, a, of a tree and you can see the root system and it's roots long. But it don't start out like that. A tree that's first planted. The roots, are, it's, it's barely in the ground. And that, that, this goes into that, uh, that uh, 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 type of Israelite who was cast on stony ground. They have no depth in them. The roots don't catch like a tree. But it says a righteous man who put his trust in the Lord and his hope. Yeah, 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 that's a good one right there. That's it right there. Look at that. Sometimes they say the roots underneath is bigger and more than a tree up top. So this is an example of what we're talking about having no root and, and being rooted. It says a man that puts his trust and hope in the Lord, it says he will be like a tree planted next to water. A tree, anytime you see trees next to water, they're the most healthiest, the liveliest. They, they, uh, leaves don't wither. They don't, uh, they don't die off because they're constantly getting nourishment from that water. Psalms 1 and 1. Watch this. The book of Psalm chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Come on. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Come on. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. It uh, says his delight is in the law of the Lord. And that's something we, uh, many of us that come in this truth, that's how... The same way you first felt when you came in, you was happy. That's how you got it. You got to keep that fire because your delight is supposed to be in the laws of the Lord. A lot of times our delights be in freaking, I know we in Atlanta, Atlanta housewives. Uh, sometimes our delight be in freaking sports and NBA and basketball and football, boxing, all kind of different things. But our delight is in the law of the Lord. A righteous man, his delight will be in the laws of the Lord. Watch this, read. And in his law doth he meditate day and it night. It says, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That thing's heavy right there. Now, of course, yeah, you can't be reading the Bible 24-7. We understand that. But it's always on your mind. It's always, every, as you're walking through your day-to-day -day life, you're seeing certain things. You're seeing certain things that's happening in the world. You're like, okay, damn, I know that's, that's that scripture right there. That's, that's Deuteronomy 20, 22 and 5 right there. Damn, okay. Yeah, Deuteronomy 22, 8. That's why our people act like that. That's why, that's why we're moving like that, because we broke God's commandments. Damn. You see, you're meditating day and night on God's laws. And guess what? Now when you have that time, you, you, you come back, you come to the Bible, you're studying, you're reading, and now you're applying. Watch this. Read on. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's what Jeremiah was talking about, that man that trusted in the Lord. That man that trusted in the Lord the, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Talking about what? This type of brother is studying. He's reading the Bible. He's in the scriptures. He ain't just opening the Bible on the Sabbath day and then closing it and leave. I, that's many of y'all do that. Many of, our, many of our people, we come up here on the, on the Sabbath day, and that's the only time you open the Bible. You don't open the Bible all week until you get to the Sabbath. And now you open the Bible, and, 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 you, and even then, you're only reading the scriptures that's coming out. And a lot of times, we, we be seeing it, brothers, be checked out, sisters too. We must meditate day and night. Verse 3 again. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Come on. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And it says he going to bring forth his fruit in his season, just like a tree. A tree, when it's first planted, and, and it's growing up. It don't immediately bring forth fruit. It has to do what? It has to grow. It has to start to take root. 
It has to be it has to get the nourishment from the minerals and certain things from the ground to eventually it gets to a point to where in its season it brings forth fruit. Same thing with us in this truth. That and and that's the uh the issue with that second type of Israelite we talked about. They had no root, so when they sprang forth, they withered away. And we're gonna touch on that here in a minute, but read that uh verse again, verse three. Verse three. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Come on. That bringeth forth fruit in his season. And bringeth forth fruit in his season. Read. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Watch this. Give me a uh, Sirach 39. Sirach 39. Because this type of uh, a person that their tree is planted by the rivers of water, it said their, their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate day and night. Let's touch on that. Because this is a part of you being rooted or not being rooted. These are examples. These are certain, certain characteristics that you have that will tell if you're rooted or not rooted. Watch this. Sirach 39, start at verse 1. The book of Sirach chapter 39 and verse 1. Oh, let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. All right, go ahead. Verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof. You see, the Bible is very redundant. We just read this one thing in Psalms where David said, meditate in the law day and night. Your delight is in the law of the Lord. Here now we are in Sirach. It says, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the, uh, of the Most High. That's your delight is in the uh, uh, law of God. You've given your mind over to it and is occupied in the meditation thereof. You got to actually sit down and read this Bible. You got to actually take the time to study the notes that you're taking. Some of y'all just be in here, just, I'm talking about your immaculate pen game. Notes be on fire. You got the, uh, the you, you creating tabs in your notes and dots and highlighting all this to go home and not, and not read it and not study it. The scriptures say medit you, you are occupied in the meditation there. Uh, read on. We'll seek out the wisdom. Of all the ancient. Because what's going to happen is you're going to seek out the wisdom of all the ancient. How do you seek out the wisdom of all the ancients? By opening this Bible, by reading, by being occupied in the meditation thereof. Read on. And be occupied in prophecies. And you're going to be occupied in prophecies. Because as you're reading, guess what starts to happen? You start to read all the prophecies and now you start to have questions. You start now, and, and as you begin to grow in, uh, in this truth, and the longer you're here, the Lord starts to open up your understanding. So now you start reading certain things. You're like, damn, okay, dang, that's what Bishop was talking about when he said X, Y, and Z. Dang, that's what the deacon was talking about when they said X, Y, and Z. I, I just read it, dang. But let me, let me, let me ask and, and get clarification. Watch this, read on. Verse 3, he will seek out, he will seek out. The secrets of grave sentences. Come on. It and says he will seek out. Hold on. Verse, verse two. two. Verse two. Verse two. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men. It says men. he will keep the sayings of the renowned men. This type of person is going to listen to counsel. He's going to keep the sayings of the renowned men he reads in the Bible. And of the renowned men that's walking the earth today. Read on. And where subtle parables are, he will be there Wherever also. Wherever subtle parables are. That, that's why you see, you, see, and you see those spirits. They always in the circle. They always want to be around. They always want to be where the understanding is. They always at the table. They all, where subtle parables is, he will be there also. Come on. Verse 3. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. It says he will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. Meaning now that understanding, he starts to take root. He starts to be now conversing. He's he he's listening. He's paying attention. He's studying, and that's what it all and it all boils down to what the meditation being uh, giving your mind over to the laws of God, being occupied in the meditation thereof, and all of this is going to stem into your faith as we go through this class, and you're gonna understand. Watch this uh, where it says uh, he will seek out grave sentences and be. Conversing in dark parables. Watch this. Jump over to chapter 38 real quick. Watch this. Chapter 38 and 24. Let's jump over a chapter. Because when you get to 39, he's continuing a thought from 38. Read that. Uh, 38 and start at verse 24. The book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 24. 
The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. Come on. And he that hath little business shall become wise. It says the wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, and he that hath little business shall become wise. Now, this ain't saying to hell with your job, don't work, and just sit at home and read the Bible all day. That we have some brothers that that have that that do that. They know they memorize all the precepts, but can't get up and go to work. That ain't what that's talking about. It says the wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, meaning you understand how to uh, schedule your time and outside of work and and duties that you have, you giving your mind over to study. A lot of times we don't realize. And Bishop did a class on it years ago about uh, time, how to divide. Uh, it was like eight hours. You had Three blocks of eight hours uh, that represent 24 and real, uh, 24 hours and how to divide things up to really utilize your time. Because I am guarantee you a lot of times people always say, yeah, you know, I'm just so swamped. I got work. I got this. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to get studying in. Oh, no, you you got if you really sit down and examine what you do day to day. Oh, you got time to study. But a lot of times our desire is because our desire isn't there. Our desire isn't on the laws of God. We're not occupied there. So instead of when we could be studying, you know what we'll do? We'll binge watch a Netflix show for, for, for eight hours. You could have been studying. You could have been doing certain things. You could have you, you could have been, you know what? Hey, let me go. Let me, let me go get my four chapters in. Let me go uh, 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 read and do something. Make sure I'm doing so. That's why the four chapters a day is heavy at minimum. That way you're making sure you're always occupied in the meditation there. You're always. But it says the wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. This type of man, he's going to find the time. He's going to make the time. He ain't going to make no excuses. He's going to make the time because why? His delight is in the laws of God. Read on. Verse 25. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow? Because how can you get wisdom that holdeth the plow if you don't make time? If all you all your aspirations is work, read on. And that glorieth in the gold, come on. That driveth oxen, and is occupied in the labors, read. And whose talk is of bullocks, come on. He giveth his mind to make furrows, and read. is diligent to give the kind. That's how you fire. know, because it ain't talking about oh you not to work, go quit your job and just no no no. It's saying he giveth his mind to make furrows. His mind, his delight ain't in the laws. His delight is in his job. That's why that's all his conversation is. That's all he talk about. When you guys talk about work, oh, yeah, he light up. Oh, yeah, 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 X, Y, and Z. I can tell you the ins and outs and the structural uh, plans and integrity of how I do my job to support Esau's kingdom. But now when the scriptures come out, quiet as a mouse. Quiet. Because it's, it's all in your mind where your delight is. That's why Christ said, uh, uh, from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Read on. He giveth his mind to make furrows and is diligent to give the kind fodder. Come on. Verse 27. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and they that cut and grave seals, and are diligent to make great variety, Come and on. give themselves counterfeit imagery, and watch to finish a work. The smith also sitting by the anvil. And considering the iron work. So as you read on, he's going over different jobs and different skills that is needful to keep a society moving. But watch this. Jump down to 31. Verse 31. All these trust to their hands. That's the point. All these trust to their hands. That's where their mind is. That's where their mentality is. Because a, a wise man, he's going to... Uh, Bring forth the opportunity. He's going to make that leisure time to what? To study, to read his chapters, to be in the Bible, to be meditating in the, uh, 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 in the laws. Read on. All these trust to their hands, and everyone is wise in his work. Come on. Without these cannot a city be inhabited, and they shall not dwell where they will, nor go up and down. But watch this. Verse 33, read. Verse 33. They shall not be sought for in sought for in public council these type of uh, uh brothers ain't gonna be sought in public uh, uh uh shall not be sought for in public council read nor sit high in the congregation read they shall not sit on the judge's seat nor understand the sentence of judgment nor understand the sentence of judgment because in order to understand these things you have to what you have to study you have to be in the bible that go now go back go back to uh Sirach. We read all that to get there. Go back to Sirach 38, read verse 3 again. This is why. 
39. I mean, 39 and 3. I'm sorry. The book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 3. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences. And That's be- why so, someone that doesn't give themselves over to the leisure of uh, studying, they ain't going to search out the deep sayings. They ain't going to be occupied in the, in the dark sayings. They ain't going to be occupied in prophecies. Read on. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. Read. He shall serve among great men. That's, and- that's why he ain't going to be sought for in public counsel. Because a man of understanding that is... Uh, uh, given his mind to the laws of uh, the, uh, the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof, he's going to serve among great men. Yeah, yeah, you got to, you know, you got to work. Yeah, I got to do what I got to do, but my mind ain't on this job. My mind is on the kingdom. And I know this is what I got to do to build my faith up and to get where I need to get. So guess what? I'm trying to be around great men. I'm going to serve among great men. Read on. And that's what I understand is going to come from. Watch this. Read on. And appear before princes. Read. He will travel through strange countries, for he hath tried the good and the evil among men. It says he will serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange country. How is he traveling? Because he's around. That's why some of y'all don't move around, don't do nothing, because you ain't around. Nobody knows you. It says he shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange country. Watch this. Read that. For he what? For he, for he has tried the good and the evil among he men. Says he has tried the good and evil among men. Watch this. Get Hebrews 5 real quick. Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5 and verse 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. For when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, Come on. ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Come on. And I'll become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. And that's all of us. When we first come in, we are in need of milk. And that's what we're reading in Sirach 39, the stages of growth in this truth and the process. Because you come in on that milk and eventually read on. Verse 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Read. For he is a babe. For he is a babe. We're all babes. We're unskillful in the, uh, uh, it says unskillful in the word of righteousness. That's why he said he shall serve among great men. He shall travel through strange country. And he will, what did it say? I don't want to butcher it. I'm here. Uh, and he, for he hath tried the good and evil among men. You're around great men. So you're hearing certain judgments come out. You're hearing certain situations that happen and how to deal with it, how not to deal with it, the right thing to do, what to do, what not to do. That's why you've tried the good and evil among men. Because in all these different cities and different places, spirits are different. They deal with different things. One city might deal with, with fornication. And another place might deal with, with murder and hatred. Another place might deal with murmuring and all different things. And then well, you got one, one city that might deal with everything. But you're traveling around and you're serving amongst the great men and you're getting the example of how to deal with these things. That's why I read on in uh, uh, Matthew, I mean in Hebrews, read on. Verse 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Those, that full age is those great men we just read about. In Sirach 39, read on. Even those who by reason of use have Even the, those who by reason of use, reason of what? Use of the word of God. Having to be skillful in the word of God. Because that's what heals our people, is the word of God. Through those, those counsels, giving the word of God, knowing what precepts are going through. Know, know what judgment to bring forth in the scriptures to help heal our people. It says, by reason of use, come on. Have their senses exercised. Have their senses exercised, read. To discern both good and evil. To discern both good and evil. That's what we're reading. That's what we're reading in Sirach 39. The processes of getting there. I'm telling you, some brothers say, you just come in here and I got it. Boom. The Lord only dealing with me. He hit me with the understanding. Boom, I got it. No, that ain't how it work. There's a process. You got to trust the process because it's in the Bible. Go back. Uh, Sirach 39. Where was we at? We left off at verse 3. Yeah, read verse 4 again. Verse 4. The book of Sirach chapter 39 and verse 4. Now, we still talking about he that hath no root. Read on. Verse 4. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries, 
For he hath tried both the good and the evil among men. Come on. He will give his heart to resort early to the Lord that made him. And he, in this type of uh, brother or sister, will give their heart early to resort to the Lord that made him. Come on. And will pray before the Most High. And will pray before the Most High, read. And will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sin. What is this telling you about this, this type of uh, Israelite? What is this telling you about this type of brother or sister? They ain't fake. They ain't phony. And they, they are sincere. Because right here, it, it's letting you know, yeah, you may mess up. Watch this. Get uh, Proverbs 24, verse 16. Proverbs 24, verse 16. Because right here it says he will give his heart early to resort to the Lord. Meaning when he mess up, he ain't making excuses. He ain't hiding his sins. He's going to repent, make supplication to the Lord, and move on. And fix it. Get that in uh, Proverbs 24, 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times. It says a just, y'all, the Bible says, it says a just man falleth seven times. Read on. And riseth up again. And riseth up again. The problem is a lot of our people, because you allow sin to overcome you, you'll fall and slip and won't rise back up. You'll just wallow and lay in your sins. And then guess what? Now you're back in the Christian church. You're back celebrating Christmas and freaking New Year's and Valentine's Day and Easter. When, when you was celebrating Passover and Feast of Purim, now you, because of sin, you, you fail. Read that verse again. Verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times. It says a just man falleth seven times. Come on. And riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. It says the wicked will fall into mischief. And this wicked here, the reason why you fall into mischief and don't rise back up, because you have no root. You're not studying. You're just here. You're just here taking a seat. And it's because you're not studying and, and applying what you're studying. Watch this. Get uh, First Peter's real quick. Popped in my head. First Peter's, uh, or it might be Second Peter's. In 2 Peter 2 and verse 20. Watch this. Because remember, we just read in Proverbs, it says, A just man falleth, but the wicked shall be uh, 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 tangled in mischief. I know I butchered it. It should be caught up in mischief. Read that. The book of 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. Because this is what happens. Read. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Which that's many of we, the pollutions in the world is what we're escaping. The fornication that's in the world. The adultery that's in the world. All the wicked traditions that's in the world. All the wicked Christianity that's in the world. Those are the pollutions of the world. The wicked Islam that's in the world. All these different religions and, and denominations have polluted our people We've escaped them through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That we're in Israelite and you got to keep God's commandments. We don't, read on. They are again entangled therein. They are again entangled therein. That's what we just read in Proverbs, a just man falleth. You fall, you're now entangled back in those sins that you left. But here's the difference, read. And overcome. That's the overcome is you didn't rise back up. Because remember, Proverbs said a just man falleth and rises again. This type of person don't rise back up. Why? Because they have no root. They ain't, they're, 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 there's nothing there. They wasn't rooted in God's laws. Read on. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So go back to Sirach 39. Matter of fact, no, no, no. Give me uh, 1 John 2 and 1. 1 John 2 and 1. Because it says he will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. That's what we must all understand and do in this truth. Don't hide your sins. Because think about it. Who, who, who are you to fear? God. That's it. What are we going to do? We're going we to give you the Bible. We're going to rebuke you sharply in the scriptures. That's it. God is the one that you got to worry about. If you, you want to hide your sins and sit in. And you see it all time and time again. The scriptures come out. The Bible come out. And I guarantee you. Right after this, it's going to be somebody sitting up in here in all type of midst of, midst, uh, the, uh, midst of adultery and wickedness, won't say nothing, and it's, and it's going to come out. The Lord will reveal it. It's better that you make supplication and reveal it and fix yourself because ultimately the goal, the goal ain't to just sit up in here. The goal is to get the kingdom. Some of y'all think this is like the Christian church. 
It's a social club. Yeah, I just got to make sure, you know, I go here every Saturday and da 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 this. That. No, the goal is to get to the kingdom. That's the goal. And that should be everybody's mind frame. Get, uh, give me that. Uh, what I tell you to get? First John what? Two. Read that. The book of First John, chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. My little children, these things write I unto you. That ye sin not. That ye what? That ye sin not. And this is the New Testament for all you Christians out there. John is saying you know not to sin. That ye sin not. And what, as a matter of fact, because I know it might be some people new. What is, give me sin. Give me that real quick. Just in case some of y'all might not know. Give me that sin. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of God's laws. Go back. The book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. So John's letting you know, don't break the commandments. Don't break God's laws. Come on. And if any man sin, we but have if you do sin, we if have you do fall, because like we read in Proverbs, a just man falleth. Like we read in Sirach 39, this man, he, his delight is in the law of the Lord. But he slipped up. He had a mishap. It says, if you do sin, read. We have an advocate with the Father. We have an advocate with the Father, read. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Jesus Christ, the righteous. So you make haste and you repent. Go back. Sirach 39, verse 5 again. The book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 5. He will give his heart to resort early to the Lord that made him. And will pray before the Most High. And will pray before the Most High. Read. And will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. That right there is that you know he's going to make supplication for his sins. He ain't going to be fake or phony. He ain't going to try to hide it. He's going to make supplication for his sins. Watch this, read. Verse 6. When the great Lord will. And guess what? When the great Lord will. Read. He shall be filled with the Spirit of understanding. He shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. Some brothers be trying to force the course of the river. No, no, no. The Lord is the one when he deems, okay, all right, he, yeah, he's ready. Put the spirit on him. When the great Lord will, he gonna fill you with the spirit of understanding. Read on. He shall pour out wise, wise sentences. And then you will begin to pour out wise sentences. But it all stems from what? Your studying, your application of God's laws, your meditation in God's laws. You ain't getting to this point not meditating in God's laws. You ain't getting to this point only reading the Bible on the Sabbath. Read on. And give thanks unto the Lord in his prayer. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge and his secrets shall, and in his secrets shall he meditate. Come on. He shall show forth that which he hath learned. He shall what? He shall show forth that which he hath it learned. It says he's going to show forth that which he hath learned. How do you learn? You got to study. You got to be occupied. And y'all know, it, it, I might be, we're going to beat a dead horse today. It says, read that verse again. Verse 8. He shall show forth that which he hath learned. He shall show forth that which he hath learned. Come on. And shall glory. In the law of the covenant of the Lord. And he's going to glory in the law of the covenant of the Lord. Come on. Many shall commend his understanding. It says many shall commend his understanding. Read. And, and so long as the world endureth, it shall not be blotted out. Read. His memorial shall not depart away. And his name shall live from generation to generation. Come on. Nations shall show forth his wisdom. And the congregation shall declare his praise. Read. If he die. If he die, read. He shall leave a greater name than a thousand. He shall leave a greater name than a thousand. I want y'all to really examine some of what we just read. Because remember, before this, we was in Psalms 1 and 1, where it says, uh, Blessed is the man who doesn't walk with the ungodly, whose delight is in the law and is occupied in the med meditating day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters. We're reading an example of that. Of how a tree grows. Because this is an example of your growth and walk in this truth. All the way up until you die. Because right here, read verse 11 again. Verse 11. If he die, he shall have a greater name than a thousand. And if he live, he shall increase it. And if he live, he shall increase it. Like a tree. Like, like I said before, like a tree. When it's first printed, pr uh, plant, not printed, planted. The roots are, are small. But as it grows, as it gets nourishment, as it gets water, which, watch this, get that water. Give me that Ephesians 6. Just in case some of y'all don't know. Ephesians 6, the water. Yes, sir. 
The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Oh, 26. Yeah, 5 and 26, yes. yes that he yes. might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So that wa the word, the water is representing the word of God. So as a, like a tree, you're being nourished with the word of God. And what happens? You begin to take root and the roots begin to grow. That's what we're seeing in Sirach 39. Growth. And that's what all of us should see in this truth. Growth. But the only way you're going to see that growth is by your application and studying of God's laws. All right, give me a, uh, give me Colossians. Colossians 2 and 7. Watch this. We're still talking about have no root. The book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 7. Rooted and built up in him. Matter of fact, started verse 6. Verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Come on. Rooted and built up in it says, him. Uh, so it says, as we receive Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him. How do we walk in him? By keeping his commandments, by applying the things that we've learned. Read on. Rooted and built up in him. It says rooted and built up in him, read. And established in the faith. And established in the faith. How do you root yourself? How do you be rooted? We just read it. We read the examples of how to root yourself. Study, applying, meditating on the scriptures. Because I'm telling you, in that day, which we're going to touch on it here in a second, in that day, if you're not rooted, you're going to be burnt up. Read on. As ye have been taught, abounding as therein. As ye have been what? As ye have been taught. You see how the Bible keep going back around to, we read in Sirach, it said, as ye have learned. Here in Colossians, as ye have been taught. To be able to be taught, that means you have to learn from a teacher. You have to actually study. That's how, that's how, the only way to be taught is to study what you are being taught. That's how you're going to be able to show forth it. That's how you're going to be able to, uh, 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 spew out those wise parables and, and have that understanding. Read on. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Abounding therein in thanksgiving. Watch this. Get uh, uh, Isaiah 28. As ye have been taught. Let's touch on that. As ye have been taught. Give me Isaiah 28. Start at verse 9. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Come on. Whom shall he teach knowledge? It says, whom shall he teach knowledge? Read. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? So watch this. What's the knowledge? Give me Malachi 2 and 7. What is the knowledge? Malachi 2 and 7 real quick. And the book get, of get 1 Peter 2 after that for the doctrine. The no, book no, of Malachi no, no. chapter Proverbs, 2. Proverbs, I'm sorry. Chapter 2 and verse 7. Come on. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. So that knowledge is the laws of God. The priest's lips should seek knowledge. He shall keep the law at his mouth. So that knowledge is going into the law. So we read, who shall he teach knowledge? Who shall he teach his laws? Now give me Proverbs. I think it's four and two. The book of Proverbs chapter four and verse two. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So the laws, is, the, the doctrine that he will teach you is what? The law. So go back. Isaiah 28, verse 9. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? So who is he going to teach this Bible? Because that's the laws. That's what is found. This is the book of the laws. Who shall he make to understand knowledge and doctrine? Read. Them that are weaned from the milk. It says them that are weaned from the milk. Read. And drawn from the breast. And drawn from the breast. Read on. Verse 10. Matter of fact, get, get uh, 1 Peter 2 and 2. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Read. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. Come on. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. That the word. That's the milk that you're weaned from, the word of God. So going back to Colossians where it says, as you have been taught, you're being taught by the word of God. Watch this. Back to uh, read verse 28. Now verse 10. The book of, book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 10. Come on. 
For precept must be upon precept. So now it's, it's giving you an example. Precept must be upon precept. You got it. We just gave an example of precept upon precept. Read. Precept upon precept. Come on. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there Here a little. little. There a little. We just read that example in verse 9. We went to uh, Malachi 2 and 7 for the knowledge. We went to Proverbs 4 and 2 for the doctrine. Precept upon precept. Those that, that's who he's going to teach knowledge. Them that are weaned from the milk. Precept must be upon precept. Read. Line upon line, line upon line. Read. Here a little and there a little. You read a little over here that gives you understanding to a little over there. Watch this. Get uh, Isaiah 34 and 16. Isaiah 34 and 16. The book of Isaiah. These are all examples of how to be rooted. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And what? And read. And what? And read. One more time. And read. One more time. And read. You got to read. It's a reason why. The bishops and deacons and the captains are always saying four chapters a day, four chapters a day. You got to read the Bible because the Bible tells you, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. You wonder why you don't know nothing? Because you don't read. You, don't, you ain't in the Bible. That's why you don't know nothing. And guess what? In that day, you ain't going to stand. You're going to bug out. Matter, matter of fact, go back to uh, Mark. We're going to read it. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. You must be meditating in God's laws. That's what strengthens your faith. I'm telling you, a lot of brothers think they, oh, I'm super, ah, I'm going to die. No, you're not. You don't study. You don't read the, but you only read the Bible on the Sabbath. You're going to be the first out the door when affliction comes. Let's read it. Go back to Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 4 and verse 17. And have no root in themselves. So everything we just read is an ex anyone that's not doing that, that is an example of not having root in yourself. You're not meditating in God's laws. The, your delight isn't in the law and the Lord, so therefore you have no root. You're not that tree planted against water, uh, uh, planted uh, uh, against water. Read on. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. So you only endure for a time. Watch this. Read on. Afterward, when affliction. It or, says afterwards, when affliction read. Or persecution. It or, says when affliction or persecution read. Ariseth for the word's sake. Watch this. I want to touch that affliction and persecution. Give me Matthew. Matthew 24 and 9. It says when affliction and persecution. Give me that. Matthew 24. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 9. Come on. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Because guess what? When you read Matthew 24, the, the apostles came to Christ asking him, hey, show us, show us the sign of thy coming in the end of the world. So Christ starts going through it. He says there shall be war. Uh, you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Uh, 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 many shall come in my name saying I am Christ, but the end is not yet. And it says nation shall rise against nation. Matter of fact, start at verse 7. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation. Come on. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. There shall be famines, read. And pestilences. Pestilence. And, and we're starting to see a little bit of that. But it's going to get worse. Just like the bishop was prophesying, the deacons, it's going to turn up. It's going to get worse. It says, you shall, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Come on. All these are the beginning of sorrow. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Watch this. Read on. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. That's what we're reading about in Mark 4. When affliction and persecution come. Read. And shall kill you. And shall what? And shall kill and you. And shall kill you. Understand that. We're, many of us are going to die for this truth. Many of us are going to die for the word's sake. Read on. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's and sake. you're going to be hated for all nations for Christ's sake, for the word of God's sake. Read on. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended. It says, and then shall what? Shall many be offended. And then shall many be offended. Why are they being offended? 
because affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake. Matter of fact, go back to uh, Mark. Read it again. Mark 4 and uh, read verse 17. Where you was at, 17 again. The book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 17. Come on. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Read. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, read. immediately they are offended. That's what we just read in Matthew. It said immediately they are offended. It says when persecution and affliction ariseth for the word's sake. They're offended. Why? Because many of us are going to start getting put to death. Many of us are going to be getting afflicted. Give me that second Ezra. Second Ezra 16, verse 68. Still talking about that affliction and persecution. That's why if you ain't, if you ain't studying, if you ain't uh, uh, giving your mind over to the laws of God, if you ain't occupied in the meditation thereof, you will be offended and you will be that person we read about in Matthew 24. Because that's what the Bible says. Read that. Second Ezra 16, 68. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse 68. Come on. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. It says the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Come on. And they shall take away certain That's of what you. we just read in Matthew. It says you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Read on. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle. It says they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle. That person is being idle. They're not. They have no root in them. That's why, that's why they have no root in them because they idle. Read on. Being idle with things offered unto idols. Come on. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. Watch this. Read on. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection. Upon those that fear the Lord. It says in every city and in the next, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Read on. Verse 71. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Read. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then, sh then shall they be known. Who are my it chosen? Says, then, then shall be known who are my chosen. Because some of y'all, we up in here, you come on the Sabbath, you look like, okay, yeah, you here. But in this day, then you, it's going to be known who are my chosen. Why? Go back. Go back to Mark. Mark, read verse 17 again. The book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 17. Come on. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Read. Afterward. When affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. Because when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. You got to harp on that, ariseth for the word's sake. Because I know a lot of times we look at affliction and persecution. Dang, I lost my job. Dang, my lights got cut off. Dang, all this. No, that, that ain't what this is talking about. It says when affliction and persecution ariseth for the word's sake. Give me, let's get an example of that. Give me Acts 26. And verse 19, here's an example of affliction and persecution ariseth for the word's sake. Give me that in uh, Acts 26, read verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 26. Because matter of fact, we read an example in 2nd Ezra 16. But I want to get another one. Get uh, Acts 26, read verse 19. Watch this. Verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus, and at Jerusalem. So this is Paul. So when you read Acts 26, this is Paul. He was being bought forth. He appealed unto Caesar uh, because the Jews basically wanted to kill him. Uh, so he, uh, he got locked up and he appealed to Caesar because Paul had Roman citizenship. So now Agrippa's come and he's before Agrippa. And if you understand Agrippa's, uh, 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 he would be, uh, he was from the Herodian line who, quote unquote, understood and knew the laws and the customs of Israel. That's why Paul was speaking to him the way he was speaking to him in Acts 26. I tell you, Paul was cold with it. Paul, Paul knew, Paul, was, Paul used wisdom. Harmless as, a, harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent. Acts 26 is a perfect example of that. But when you get to verse 19, watch what Paul says, because he's speaking to Agrippa. Read on. Verse 20. But verse, so, verse, 19 verse, ni again. verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, 
I was not disobedient until the heavenly vision. Meaning talking about when Christ knocked him off the horse and told him what he was supposed to go do. He said, I wasn't disobedient to the heavenly vision. Well, watch this read. But showed first unto them of Damascus. So what did Paul start doing? He started to do the work. He went to Damascus. Read on. And at Jerusalem. Then he went to Jerusalem. Read. And throughout all the coast of Judea. Read. And then to the Gentiles. Come on. That they should repent. That they should what? Repent. Read. And turn to God. And do works meet for repentance. And do works meet for repentance, meaning keep God's commandments. Paul was out doing the work. He was going and teaching. He was in these different countries teaching repentance in the faith of Christ. Read on. Verse 21. For these causes. For these causes. Read. The Jews caught me in the temple. That's why they caught him in the temple. Read on. And went about to kill and me. that's why they wanted to kill him. So this is an example of. Affliction and persecution ariseth for the word's sake. That's why Paul. That's why Paul was in the situation he was for these causes. For why he, for him preaching Christ, him going out and getting there and telling his people to repent, and keep God's commandments. They wanted to kill him. Guess what? The same thing is going to happen today. The same thing is going to happen again, and it's going to be some of y'all up in here who ain't rooted, who have who have no root in you because you don't study. Some of you, some of y'all on security, don't study. It don't have no understanding, you not root it. Go back. Go back. Uh, Mark 4. Re Where was we at? 17. Verse 17 again. The book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 17. Come on. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Have no root in themselves, and but endure for a time. Come on. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, Immediately they are offended. Read on. And these are they which are sown so among the third thorns. Third type. It says, and these are they which are sown among thorns. Read on. Such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So now this type of Israelite, he came in and he was studying. He took some root. But then he became unfruitful. What you're going to understand and realize, it all is going to tie back to your application and meditation in God's laws. Because this type of word, read verse 19 again. Verse 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things it entering in. the cares in. of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. Watch this. Give me 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4 and verse, start at verse 1. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 1. Come on. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. It says preach the word, read. Be instant in season, out of season. It says be instant in season, out of season. All going back to meditating day and night. You have to have your mind sharp to be instant in season, out of season. Read on. Reprove. Rebuke, Read. exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Because the time is going to come where there are going to be people that will not endure sound doctrine. Yeah, they come in. Yeah, they, 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 they take root. But then they become unfruitful. Why? Because they didn't endure sound doctrine. They wasn't instant in season and out of season. Read on. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Because after their own lust, they will begin to heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That's how they become unfruitful. They start window shopping and, and, and looking for the doctrines that fit them. Because they have a sin in them that they don't want to get rid of. That they don't, they don't want to uh, 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 cast out. Read on. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And they shall what? Turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto and fables. And shall be turned unto fables. And you see many of people run up out of here on the same thing, especially back in 2018. You see many of them. They on YouTube right now talking crazy, talking about all type of different doctrines and things of that nature. Fables that are not in the scriptures. Watch this. Give me, uh, give me Matthew 12. Watch this. Matthew's 12. 
the lust of other things come in and choke, choke the word. Give me that Matthew 12 and start at verse 43. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, and verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. So many of us, when, we, when you come in this truth, you repent, the unclean spirit leaves. It, it's walking in dry places. It's, going, it's, it's in the world. Read on. It's seeking rest, but it can't find a host. Read on. Verse 44. Whether, whether that unclean spirit might be adultery, it might be crack, it might be meth, it might be lying, it might be uh, uh, the spirit of preeminence, it might be the love of money, it might be homosexuality. All these different spirits, it le- when you come into this truth and you repent, it leaves you. Read on. Verse 44. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. But now that spirit comes back. It leaves for a time. You begin to grow, and then it comes back, and it finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Meaning what? Christ ain't in you. Christ ain't there. Watch this. Get uh, Revelations 3 and 20. Because what's supposed to happen? Revelations 3, verse 20. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, and verse 20. Come on. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Christ stands at the door and knocks, read. If any man hear my voice. If any man hear his voice, come on. And open the door. How do you hear Christ's voice? Through these scriptures. Remember, it says, my sheep hear my voice. You hear the words. You're occupied in the meditation thereof. This is the voice, the Bible. Come on. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. It says, I will come into him, read. And will sup with him. And will sup with him, read. And he with me. And he with me. But that brother that doesn't hear his voice, because he isn't occupied in the meditation thereof, guess what? The demons come back, them spirits come back, and find it swept and garnished. And that that may be over a process of time. The demon might come back once and, and not, oh, dang, you know, I still see Christ in there, and he leaves. Then he comes back, oh, dang, he's still in there, and leaves. Then he come back a, a, again, and now he sees it swept and guard. Okay, dang, okay, Christ has left the building. Oh, okay, okay, all right. You, you, you starting to battle. You starting to look at the law. Okay, let me come back where to my home. Go back. Read verse 44 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 44. Come on. Then he said, I will return into my house from which I came out. Come on. And when he has come. He findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Read, meaning there's no, under, there no understanding there. Christ ain't there. Read on. Verse 45. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Guess what, Guess what happens? He go and get his homies. He go get seven more, more spirits more wicked than he. Yeah, it started with porn, but you couldn't kick it. You couldn't overcome. It says a just man falleth seven times and get back up. You couldn't get back up. And guess what? That demon brought his homies. He, now he, now, he, now you're looking at kitty porn. You're looking at transgender porn. You're looking at all kind of stuff. To now, I want to act out what I'm seeing. Now you're in the midst of full-blown ad- adultery, uh, getting reach-arounds and all kind of nonsense. That's what it's talking about. You got, he says he take uh, seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Yeah, it might have started with the weed. It might have started with the... Uh, Oh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just eating the edibles, just the edibles. You know, I ain't smoking. I ain't smoking the marijuana. It's just the edibles. I can eat it. But you're not being sober-minded. That, that spirit's still on you, and guess what? He bring his homies, and now them edibles turn into crack. That crack turn into meth, to heroin. Now you a full-blown junkie and drug addict because you let them spirits overcome you. Read on. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And now the last state is worse than the first. Yo, now, now you now you are all in the man. You see it time and time again. People that's been up in here. Yeah, at one point in time, they might have been viewed as a mighty teacher. Now they state is worse than what it was. Why? Because they couldn't overcome. Their, 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 their mind was swept and garnished because they had no application of what they was reading. 
I, I, some of y'all, I'm telling you, some, some brothers think, oh, yeah, I can pair a bunch of scriptures. I, I have a good memory, and I can memorize verses. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, but if you don't apply it, it means nothing. If you don't actually apply what you're memorizing, the scriptures that you can parakeet, it means nothing. Watch it. Give me that in uh, uh, Sirach 37. Sirach 37. Where is it at? Uh, verse 20. Sirach 37, 20. Is that it? The book yeah, of Sirach 37, 20. The book of Sirach chapter 37 and verse 20. Oh, is that it? Uh, no, no, no. Start up at uh, 19. Verse 19. There is one that is wise and teacheth many. It says there is one that is wise and teacheth many. Read. And yet is unprofitable to himself. You're unprofitable to yourself. Yeah, you, you can uh, memorize the precepts. You can gurg regurgitate what you've heard, but you're unprofitable to yourself because you don't apply nothing that you've learned, nothing that you've written. And guess what? You're going to be that third type of Israelite that is choked. The word is choked out of you because of your lust that you can't overcome. Because you're not applying nothing you're reading. You're not applying nothing that you're viewing. And a lot of it comes because you know how you just, you got a good memory. You can parakeet. So, yeah. And I've seen brothers. Yeah, I can parakeet. I got good memory. So, you don't study. Yeah, you, you, you think, okay, I, can, I, I got a photographic memory. I hear it. I know it. I ain't got to read. That ain't what the Bible say. And guess what happens? The word gets choked out of you. Because you ain't constantly meditating and you're unprofitable to yourself. So go back. Where was we at? Go back to uh where was we at? Matthew 12. Yeah, yeah, go back, go back. And 40. Now, matter of fact, drop that. Go to Jude. Go to Jude 16. Jude 16. Come on. The book of Jude, verse 16. Come on. These are murmurous complainers. Come on. Walking after their own lust. These are those types of spirits. Murmurers. Complainers. Why? Because the word has been choked out of them. And, it, and, and that happens to many people in this truth. You hit that, that, that bump in the road. Yeah, you've been here three, four, five. You're going on year five, year six. And now you, you start to get stagnant or you hit a bump. They, you start to get comfortable and you start going through the motions. And guess what happens? Now that, 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 that spirit creeps in, that murmuring. Now you're starting to look at things. Ah, I don't like that. Ah, now you start being complainers. And guess what happens? That spirit of bitterness starts to set in because maybe, maybe something happened that you ain't dealt with. Because you ain't dealt with it. Now that spirit of bitterness starts to set in. And you become what? Murmurers and complainers. Read that verse again. Verse 16. These are murmurous complainers. Walking after their own lust. Walking after their own lust. The word is being choked out of you. Read on. And their mouth speaking great swelling words. Their mouth speaking great swelling words. Come on. Having men's persons in admiration. And a lot of times that's what it be. Some of y'all come in here and you're only here because of your friend. Because you're that, 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 that friend-ish. You're only in here because of my friend, my friend. You have men's persons in admirations. You're only going to endure before time. If you ain't in here for the Lord, guess what? You, when that affliction come that we just read about, when, the, when those persecutions come, you're going to be on the other side offended and betraying us. Understand that. You're going to betray those that fear the Lord because you had men's persons in admiration. So you wasn't really rooted like you thought, and the, and, and the word was choked out of you. Read on. Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Read, because of advantage. Advantage. A lot of times, too, brothers that get close to you, they have men's persons in admiration because of the advantage, because they want some type of rank or they want to uh, get in a certain position just to rule the men roughly. Understand? We see you. Understand that. Because you have you put men's persons in, in, in admiration for your own advantage. Read on. Because remember, watch this. Give me a Psalm 75. Because we read the steps on how to grow in this truth. How to build your name and how to root yourself. Give me Psalms, what is that, uh, 75 promotion coming from the Lord. Brothers be forgetting this. Uh, 75 and 6, watch this. Going into the, uh, having men's aberrations for advantage. Sometimes brothers do that for, for disadvantage. Read that. 
The book of Psalm chapter 75 and verse 6. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. We forget God is the judge. God is the one that puts a brother up and sets a brother down. But what brothers are doing, yeah, let me get, let me get close to uh, officer such and such. Let me get close to captain such and such. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to slide him this gift, you know what I'm saying, get cool with him for my own advantage, for rank in certain positions. It don't work like that. Understand that. There is a God. A lot of times, I'll tell you, our people, we, uh, sometimes we be bugged out. We forget there is a God. And God's eyes is 10 times brighter than the sun. Give me that Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. We forget there is a God. God knows the heart. God tries the reign. Okay, yeah, yeah, you want to get that position, da, 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 da. But God is the one that set it up. Sometimes God will set you up to expose your wicked behind. That happens too. Understand that. Nothing moves without God. Understand that. That's why you got to make sure you're sincere and rooted in this truth so that you can stand in that day. Read, read that, Jeremiah 17 and 9. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. Come on. And desperately wicked. The heart is deceitful above all. Your mind is deceitful. You would, you would trick yourself into believing you are right. That's why you have to filter everything to the Bible. That's why you have to meditate on God's laws. Because you'll be telling yourself that you're right. You, you could trick yourself. Like right now, you got people that have tricked themselves into believing that the day starts when the sun comes up. The heart is deceitful above all things. You have people right now that believe it is okay to rape little girls. And they have deceived themselves into believing that it's biblical. It says the heart is deceitful above all things. And guess what? You'll believe it. Many of y'all believe that crap because you don't study. You ain't meditating. That's what that, and that's what we just read in uh, uh, Timothy, where it says uh, 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 many of them will not endure sound doctrine. Read on. The heart is deceitful above all things. Come on. And desperately wicked. And desperately, our mind is desperately wicked. Understand this flesh that we in, it wants to sin desperately. That's why you got to always keep your mind in check. That's why you always got to occupy and be in the meditation of God's laws because your mind is desperately wicked. That's why you be having them dumb thoughts pop up. You're like, damn, where the hell did that come from? Dumb, stupid thoughts just come out of nowhere. Be like, God, damn, what the hell? I'm tripping. I'm bugging. But some of y'all, that dumb thought will pop up because you ain't rooted. You go along with it. You start to try to find ways to talk yourself into it. Into, yeah, I mean, I, you know, that's okay. I, I can do that. that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and then you know what? I can watch this music video. I'm good. Meanwhile, the music video ain't nothing but ass shaking all over the screen. No, knowing that's what you battle with. But you, your heart is desperately wicked, so you talk yourself into it. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm, I'm looking at it for purposes, you know what I'm saying, putting this class together. Negro, watch this. Read that verse again. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful. Above all things. Come on. And desperately wicked. Read. Who can know it? Who can know it? God knows it. Read on. Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. God searches the heart. Read. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways. It says God tries the reins, and he gives to every man according to his ways. According to his ways. So it don't matter what you do to try to uh, uh, seek men's admiration for advantage. God knows. That's what you got to understand. There is a God. Yeah, you might fool men. Yeah, you might fool, you might fool uh, men on this earth, but you ain't fooling God. And God is going to give to every man according to his ways. Read on. And according to the fruit of his doings. And according to the fruit of his doings. So go ahead. Give me, uh, drop that. Go back to Jude, where we was at. Jude. I'm going to speed up a little bit, man. Verse 16? <laughs> yeah. The book of Jude, verse 16. Come on. These are murmurous complainers. Come on. Walking after their own lust. These are murmurous complainers walking after their own lust. Come on. And their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Come on. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before, the, before of the apostles 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last there time. There should be mockers in the last time. Come on. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Who shall walk after their own ungodly lust. That's what you just read in Mark 4. The word being choked out of them because of their own ungodly lust. Understand that. No, we don't push you up out of here. We don't put you up out of here. You put yourself out through your own lust, through your own enticed. But you've had it, you, you've got it twisted in your mind thinking, oh yeah, how you I see this and how you I see that. And and and, and they kick, they did this to me and they did that to me. No, you did that to yourself because of your own lust. All we want you to do is fear God and keep his commandments. That's it. That's it. But because your own lust and your own enticed, because you don't study, you don't apply God's commandments, you deceive yourself. And now, and now, and now we the enemy. Now, now we the bad guy. Now, now, now we the ones that, that do all evil and wickedness. Hey, yeah, you know, hey, listen, God said we're going to be hated for all men for his name's sake. Read on. Verse 19. Come on. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual. It ha says, these be they who separate themselves. Understand that. Read that verse again. Verse 19. These be they who separate themselves. These are the type of spirits that separate themselves. They even going back to Mark 4. Understand that. It, reason why someone will separate themselves or be separate or won't be around, won't talk, won't communicate. Because watch this. Give me a Malachi real quick. What's the law? Get Malachi. Yes, sir. What did the Lord say? You know what I want? Yes, sir. Read that. Malachi 3.16. The book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to it another. It says, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Read on. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. Read. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. For them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. So when you start to separate yourself... It says, them that feared the Lord spake often to one another. What would make someone want to separate themselves, what would make someone want to basically lose communication is sin. They're walking after their own ungodly lust. They have an issue. Of understand that. Spirits that separate themselves, that ain't of God. Understand that. You might deceive yourself into thinking, yeah, you know, I'm just, you know, I, I'm going to stay away for a little while. Meanwhile, you, was, you, you, was, you had the injury. You, you was hurt a little bit, and you had no problem going to the, coming to the Sabbath. Now, all of a sudden, you ain't around. What changed? What's different? All right, maybe it's something you're battling with, something you're dealing with. Because everybody knows when you come around, what's going to happen? You're going to get exposed. You're going to get called out, and that's good for you. That's healthy. That's good. You want somebody to be around you be like, hey, you tripping, you bugging. Because ultimately, we all want to what? Get the kingdom. That should be everyone's goal. That should be everyone's uh, focal point is the kingdom. So, yeah, let me come around because I might not see it. But these men of God around me that have Christ on them because I see Christ in them, they're going to reject me. Like, okay, yeah, you're right. Damn, mouth of two or three witnesses, yeah, I'm tripping. But because you know you're in sin, because you know you're a murmurer, you know you're walking after your own ungodly lust, you separate yourself. You stop communicating. You don't apply Malachi 3.16. Ex understand that. Go back. Jude. The book of Jude, verse 19. Come on. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual. It says sensual, emotional. Read. Having not the spirit. Having not the spirit. Go back. Go back. Matthew. Uh, Mark. Mark. Mark 4. Mark 4, and where we left off at. The book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 19. Come on. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And it becometh unfruitful. It choketh the world. Remember, we read in uh, Timothy, it says, they didn't endure sound doctrine, heaping unto themselves teachers having itching ears murmurers, complainers, walking after their own ungodly lust. And what you're going to understand, it all stems from what? Idleness. Not meditating in God's laws. I told you I was going to be the dead horse. Matter of fact, give me 1 Timothy chapter 2. 
Because just like that second type of Israelite that wasn't rooted, that third type of Israelite, what begins to happen? It begins to be choked. It begins, the word begins to be choked out of them. Why? Because now they started, to, they, they started strong, but they didn't stay. They didn't endure, meaning they, they could have stopped. Then, you know what, I'm going to stop. They hit that slump, you know, I'm going to stop, stop, stop studying. They stopped reading the Bible as much. They stopped coming around, and here comes Satan, a knocking. And because you ain't fortif- kept yourself fortified, you ain't kept your faith built up, now you begin, the word begins to be choked out of you because of all the other lust uh, and, and, and desires of the flesh. Get uh, 2, 2 Timothy, Timothy 2. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 11, though. Start at verse 11. Verse 11. It is a faithful saying. Watch this. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. It says it is a faithful saying. If we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Those that have repented and kept the commandments all the way to the point to where you die for this truth. It says, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Meaning what? We're gonna have the, you're going to have that eternal life. You're going you gonna to be in the resurrection. Read on. For, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. It says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Read. If we deny him, he will also, he also if, will deny us. And if we deny him, he also will deny us. And guess, guess, guess what's going to cause you to deny him? Your lack of study. But watch this. I'm going to get an example. Give, first, give me Matthew 10, 27. We're going to speed through this a little bit. Give me Matthew 10, 27. Because it says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, we also will deny us. A lot of times we got to remember, like I said before, there is a God. And our fear should always be towards God. And Christ explained that to us. Give me Matthew 10, verse 27. The book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. What we learn in darkness, we're supposed to speak in light. All these words in this Bible to understand it, we're supposed to speak it in light so that everybody can hear. Guess what? Paul was doing that example. And guess what? He got locked up and, wanted, and, was, and, and died for it. Same thing with us. The things that we learn in darkness, you're supposed to speak in light. Read on. And what ye hear in the ear. And what you hear in the ear. Read. That preach ye upon the housetop. So preach it on the housetop. That's what we just read in Timothy. It says, hey, you deny him before. Uh, uh, matter of fact, go back. I don't want to butcher it. Read it again. I got it. It says, uh, if we deny him, he will deny us also. You're supposed to preach this through the housetop. You ain't supposed to fear, man. Regardless of who coming at you. Like, what had, like it, we was on the quest in Curacao. They want to try to stop us for the word. You ain't stop. We're going to go out there and preach anyway. You ain't stopping nothing. We're going to preach the gospel because we many of us understand, yeah, we might die for this. But you understand this. Read the next verse. Verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body. If you don't fear them that can kill the body, you won't deny them. But the only way you can get to that point is by studying. By applying. I'm telling you, many of y'all, you think you're loyal, but if you don't study, if you don't, if you don't study, you have no loyalty that's to this right. truth. Understand that. Un- that. And that's what we're reading. Because the only way to build your faith up is through study. Read on. And fear not them which killed the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Because you're not supposed to fear them to kill the body. But, read. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. In hell. You supposed to fear him that is able to uh, kill both soul and body in hell. You supposed to fear the one true living God because he's the only one that can truly wipe you off the face of this earth. Yeah, yeah, we might, this flesh right here we got, you know, it might be killed, but you understand we get new bodies. Now, if you don't study, you might not understand that because you may have never read that scripture. Watch this. I want to get some examples of, of uh, uh, Matthews 10, 28 of our forefathers. Give me 2 Maccabees 7. Many times we read this, but really pay attention to what the seven sons are saying. Give me 2 Maccabees 7, verse 1. Fear not them that kill the body, but rather him which is able to kill both body and soul in death. Give me 2 Maccabees 7. Let's get an example of that. The book of 2 Maccabees. Because these are the things you're supposed to be meditating on to build your faith 
to where in that day you can endure. You ain't going to deny him. You're going to be able to take that death and live with him. Our forefathers understood that. Read that. 2 Maccabees 7, start at verse 1. We're going to jump around in here. The book of 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 1. Come on. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh. Come on. So they were compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh. They were compelled to break God's commandments. Many of us in this day is going to be faced with that cross world. Break God's commandments or die. Understand that. Read on. And were tormented with, the, with scourges and whips. Read. But one of them that spake first said thus. So watch this. Listen to what he's saying. Because we read about the courageous, but really pay attention to what they are saying. It says, but the first spake uh, said thus. Read. What wouldest thou ask or learn of us? Read. We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. He said we are ready to die than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Watch this. Read on. Verse 3. Then the king being enraged. So the king was pissed. Read. Commanded pans and cauldrons to be made high. Come on. Which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body. The rest of his brethren and his mother looking so on. So this is the first one. So he said we're going to, this, this brother said we'd rather die than transgress the laws of God. Esau was pissed. So he cut the cauldron hot, cut his tongue out, started chopping his body up in front of the sons and the mothers. Don't, understand this, don't think this won't happen in this day. We just read in 2nd Ezra 16. It says they shall be like madmen spoiling. There was great insurrection. Understand that. Don't think, don't, a lot of times we be living in la-la Christianity land thinking that this won't happen today. That's why you got to build your faith up and study and, and be in these laws to understand and know, yeah, this, could, this, this definitely could happen to those that fear God and keep his commandments. Watch this. Uh, so jump down to verse 9. So the first one, they, they, he, ch he, he chopped his body up, threw it in the cauldron and, and in front of the, uh, the, uh, his brothers and mother. Jump down to verse 9. Watch this. Uh, matter of fact, yeah, verse, verse 8, I'm sorry. The book of 2 Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 8. But he answered in his so own. he brought the second, read. But he answered in his own language and said, no. No, no, I ain't no swine's flesh, read. Wherefore he also received the next torment in order. So he received the same torment as the first. Watch this, read on. As the former did. And when he, and when he was at the last gasp. And when he was at the last gasp. Watch what he said, read. He said, thou like a fury takest us out of this present life, but the king of the world shall raise us up. He said, you, it says, thou like a fury takest us out this present life, but the king of the world, read, shall raise us shall up. Shall raise us up. How, understand this. this. This is in the Old Testament. These brothers had to have some level of what? Understanding. Meaning they were occupied in the meditation thereof. They were studying God's laws for them to understand the king is going, the king of the world shall raise us up. We're going to get everlasting, like Christ's going to deliver us. Read on. Who have died for his laws unto everlasting he life. He said, I died for his laws unto everlasting life. Read on. Matter Verse, of fact, jump down. Yeah, read on, read on. Verse 10. After him was the third made a mocking stock. Come on. And when he was required, he put out his tongue, and the right soon. So the next one, when he was required, he put his tongue out. Go ahead, chop it off. Chop it off. That means his faith was on a whole. His, this is the level of faith we got to get to, to where when they, they talking about this, yeah, cut it off, because I ain't, I ain't eating that swine. I ain't breaking these commandments. Hmm, he go, cut it off. This is the level of faith we got to get to. Read on. And that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, Mm. And said courageously. Watch this. He said, watch what he says, though. Read. These I had from heaven, and for his laws I, I, des I despise them. It says, these I got from heaven, and for his laws I despise him. Take my hands. Cut my tongue off. I despise him for it. I despise this for my laws. Some of, some of us can't even, some of us can't understand what, what Christ was saying. Cut off, if I write arm offend, he cut it off. He was speaking literally like, take my arm. Christ was talking about the things that, that beset you. But this man understood. Listen, ain't nothing going to keep me from the kingdom. 
That's what he's going. That's why he said, take my arm. Because think about it. You Here it is. Your tongue is getting chopped off. Your arm is getting chopped off. The amount of pain you would be in. But for your mind to be, to understand, listen, I don't care. I'll lose it. Some of us won't even get rid of a phone because we deal with porn. So, 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 <laughs> some of us can't even uh, 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 come to the Sabbath. We have a, we have a level of faith that we must obtain to when it comes through study. Because these men, don't, don't get it twisted. These men was occupied in the meditation of God's laws. Read on. And for his laws, I despised them. And from him, I hope to receive them again. He said, from him, I'm going to get them again. I'm going to get that new body. Read on. Verse 12. uh, Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Watch this. So when he was ready to die, he said this. Here's the next one. When he was ready to die, watch what he says. It is good being put to death by men. He said it is good being put to death by men. Come on. To look for hope from God to be raised up again by him. Read. As for thee. Thou shall have no resurrection These to were not just no regular men. These were men of understanding. He said, listen, it's good to be, it's good to be put to death uh, by men to look to hope for God. He applied what Christ said in Matthew 10. Don't fear them that uh, uh, can kill the body, but fear him that can kill both body and soul in death. Read on. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection he to said, life. He for you, Esau. You ain't having no resurrection of life. How did he understand that? How did he know that? Because it's written in Obadiah. He studied. He understood. He read, yeah, there, there shall be none of them remaining. So he let, he let them know, you have no resurrection of life. Read on. <laughs> Verse 15. Afterward, they brought forth the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, thou hast power over men. Come on. Thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. It says you got power over men. You are corruptible. Read on. Thou doest what thou wilt. You do what you want. Come on. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God. Don't think our nation is forsaken of God. How would he understand that? How would he know that? Because he paid attention to what the prophets were saying. He paid attention to what Jeremiah was prophesying. Remember, this is later. During the time of the Greeks, he paid attention to what, Isaiah, what was written by Isaiah. What Ezra prophesied. Because remember, at, during this time, Second Ezra was written. First Ezra was written. Remember, we had the books of the prophets. They had these things. So for him to know, oh, no, 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 our, our nation ain't forsaken of God. He was studying. He had understanding. That's why his faith was like it was. That's why he was able to say, listen, we got, we got resurrection to God. Because he read it. He understood it and he believed it. And it strengthened his faith to be able to take his death. Read on. Verse 17. But abide a while, and behold his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. It says, you're going to abide a while, and then behold his great power. Yeah, your day is going to come, Esau, and you're going to behold his great power, and he will torment thee and thy seed in that lake of fire. Watch this. Jump down to verse... Uh, no, read on, read on, read on, read on. Verse 18. After him also they brought the sixth, who, being ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves. Come on. Having sinned against our God, therefore marvelous things are done unto us. Come on. But think not thou that takest in, in hand to strive against God, that thou shalt escape unpunished, but the mother was marvelous above all. This. It says the mother was marvelous above all. Read. And worthy of honorable memory. Come on. For when she saw her seven sons slain with the space of one day, Damn. she buried with a good courage. How many of you sisters going to be able to do that in that day? This is the type of foremother y'all need to be. This is a righteous example right here. She said she took it with courage. and She seen all her sons slain in one day. All her sons slain in one day, but she took it with courage because she had understanding. Showing you what? Her husband built her up. She had a husband. He just, he, he made, you don't read about him, him being killed somewhere else because obviously there was a man somewhere in this picture because this is a righteous. She said she uh, bare, uh, had him slain within the space of one day. She bare with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Some of y'all will lead a truth for your children. 
Some of y'all will. Y'all will leave. Y'all will bug the hell out because your, kid, your kids want to go celebrate Christmas and all this. So you will leave the truth. Or you'll have that wicked, wicked demon come back in the house. Understand that. This is the righteous example you sisters need to be paying attention to. And build your faith up to where this sister was. Because watch this. Read verse 21. Verse 21. Yay. She exhorted every one of them in their own, in her own as language. As they were getting killed, she was exhorting them in her own language. Exhorting them in what? The laws of God. The things that they've been taught. Remember what you've been taught. Remember what, what, remember what Jeremiah says. Remember what your father taught you. Remember what Isaiah said. Remember all these things. She was exhorting them. So these were men of understanding. These were men of, these were learned men. Because their mother, their father taught them. The point is, their faith came because of what the, the, the understanding, the application hell and meditation nah. of God's laws. What the hell? I tell y'all all right? Hell nah. <laughs> all right, anyways, damn. They threw me off. Uh, Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25, but when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother. So now and, the last son, read on. And exhorted her that she should counsel the young man to save his life. And when, she, and when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that, that she would counsel her son. Read. But she, bowing herself so toward they, him. They tried to come to the mother like, listen, you done seen all your kids die. Save your last son. Just save him. Go and convince him, and y'all be good. Esau came with de deception. Some sisters, they'll fall for it. Not this sister. Read on. Verse 27. But she, bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country the language on this, spake in her country language on this manner. Come on. Oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourish thee. And brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. And what? And endured the troubles of education. This right here showed you they were taught, and they applied what they learned and what they taught. They are an example of Sirach 39. They're an example of uh, uh, Psalms 1 and 1. This is, this is not an example of having no root. These men were rooted, and it stemmed from what they were taught and what they learned and their application. Read on. Verse 28, I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein, and consider that God made them of things that were not, and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor. She's exhorting. He said, fear not this tormentor. Come on. But being worthy of thy brethren. You're going to be worthy of your brethren, Read. Take thy death. Take thy death. You know what level of faith you got to have? Because none of us is really, none of us has experienced death. Understand that. Yeah, yeah, it's, some of us may have, you know, got cut, fell. That hurts. But we ain't experienced getting limbs chopped off. Some of, some of us may have had fingers cut off or certain extremities cut off. And it hurts. But we ain't experienced it to this level. And for her to have that faith to tell her son, take your death. That faith only comes through study. Through application of God's laws, through meditating in here, to reading, to applying. That's where that faith comes. It don't come, like Christianity make you think, oh, it just comes from osmosis. As long as I just believe and I have the faith of Jesus. No. Faith without works is dead. Watch this. Uh, let's go back to Timothy. So as you read on, her son died. He took his death. And then she ultimately died. And this memorial was left. This example was left on us to help strengthen and build our faith. So go back. Uh, Second Timothy's. Where we was at? We was at uh, Second Timothy's 13. verse 12. Read verse 12 again. The book of Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Come on. If we deny him, he will also deny so us. So it says if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. The example we just read is in 2 Maccabees 2. They suffered. And they understood they're going to reign with him. That's the same understanding we got to have. So when that trials and tribulations come, we ain't like that second and third Israelite. We ain't with no root spring forth and then we are offended when an affliction comes for the word's sake. Read on. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Come on. If we believe not, 
Yet he abideth faithful. Come on. He cannot deny himself. Watch this read. Verse 14. Of these things, put them and remember. So Paul's letting, letting us know. Of these things, put them in remembrance. Read on. Charging them before the Lord. Charging them before the Lord. Read. That they strive not about words to no profit. That we strive not about words to no profit. Read. But to the subverting of the hearers. Because that's ultimately our job is to re re wake up those and repent. The hearers, those that believe and fear. My sheep hear my voice. Not to strive back with words on profit. Watch this. Read on. Verse 15. Study to show thyself approved. So Paul said all that about uh, suffering. And if, if we suffer, uh, we will also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. And then he gets to saying, read that verse again. Verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Understand that. The only, guess what? Second Maccabees 7, they were studied. And they were approved of God. Why? Because they endured. That's why he said put all these things in remembrance. Study to show thyself approved unto God. The only way you're going to endure in that day is if you study, is if you apply God's laws, if you uh, uh, are meditating in the uh, uh, occupation thereof. Read on. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. It says a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Because when you study, you won't deny him because you won't be ashamed. Just like our forefathers wasn't ashamed. They weren't ashamed for God's laws to the point to where, kill me, I'm going to die. For God's laws. That's why I said study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Read. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You're going to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. You're going to be able to go precept upon precept. Why? Because you're going to have that root. Read on. But shun profane and vain babbling. Because guess what happened? Because, and he says, but shun uh, uh, profane and vain babblings. Read. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Come on. And the worm will eat as doth a canker. It says, and the worm will eat uh, doth as a canker. You understand what a canker is? A canker, like a canker. Uh, matter of fact, look up the definition of a canker real quick. Mikai, you got it? Or just look, uh, uh, find it real quick. Definition of canker. Because this goes back to that third type of Israelite as well. And that's why I said a lot of times studying, application, meditation, Whenever sin comes in, the Bible is closed. Watch this. What, uh, what is a canker? Read uh, that. Canker. A destructive fungal disease of apple and other trees that result in damage of the bark. That ain't it. Where's the, where's the, where's the other one? Uh, no, it's, uh, let me see. Watch this. Or is it in the Webster's? Yeah, go to Webster's. Yeah, go down. Read, uh, yeah. Canker, an erosive or spreading sore. It says an erosive or spreading sore. Read number two. Number two, an area of necrosis. No, 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 no. number, oh, number okay. two. A plant a disease. A caterpillar. Uh, oh, a caterpillar, to, a caterpillar destructive to plants. So a canker ain't just boom. And you, it starts slow. It starts small, and it spreads, just like fain, a profane and vain babblings. Because what he's going into, matter of fact, read verse seventeen again. Verse seventeen, and the word will eat as doth a canker. It will eat at you as a canker because you ain't studying. You don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Your faith ain't built up. Now, when heresies come, when these when these do different doctrines come, guess what? It starts to eat at you like a canker. And it begins to spread. That's why, that's why we don't play no games when it comes to these other doctrines and these foolish different uh, 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 ideologies you want to bring up here. You got to go. Because your word will eat like a canker. It will begin to spread. Read on. And their word will eat as doth the canker of whom Hymenus and Feltus. And guess what? All you that don't study, you'll get swept away with that nonsense. That's why you see many of them leave up out of here. Whenever that nonsense comes, come on. Verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred. Who concerning the truth have erred, read. Saying that the resurrection is past already. Because that was the doctrine that uh, Harmanius and uh, Philetus was pushing, saying the resurrection is already past. And guess what? Many people 
followed them up out of there. That's why Paul was addressing it to Timothy. So when he went to the churches that he knew how to address it, same thing with us today. That's why we have to make sure we're rooted. Because the, matter of fact, give me that in uh, uh, Timothy. What is that? Uh, 2 Timothy 11, heresies must come. Is this 11 and 19? It's either first or second, 11 and 19. I think it's second, yeah. yeah. I know it's 11 and 19. Yeah, Corinthians. What did I say, Timothy? Yeah, Corinthians, Corinthians. Uh, 11 and the book of, oh. First Corinthians 11 and 19. The book of First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 19. Come on. For there must, for there must be also heresies among you. It said there must be heresies among you. Come on. That day which are approved may be made manifest among you. Because those that are approved. Through studying and application, they're going to be made manifest because they ain't going to be swallowed away with the nonsense, with the doctrines. They're going to be rooted. They're going to be firm. They're like, oh, no, that's, I know how to rightly divide the word of truth. That ain't biblical. That ain't in the Bible. Well, we can rape. That ain't in the Bible. What? The, uh, the, the day starts when the sun come up. That ain't biblical. Heresies must come so that they that are approved may be made manifest. Go back. Go back. Second Timothy's verse 18 again. The book of Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 18. Come on. Who concerning the truth have heard, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. And overthrown the faith of some. Understand that it says and overthrown the faith of some. Why did it overthrow the faith of some? Read verse 15 again. Verse 15. Study. To show thyself approved unto God. That's why it overthrew your faith. That goes back to uh, Mark uh, uh, 4. We ain't forgot to go back to Mark 4. Read verse 18 again. All this ties into it as to why your faith will be overthrown. That third type of Israelite where the word gets choked out. All of it goes back to yeah, studying and meditation of God's laws. Read that. The book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 17. And have no root in themselves. No, no, no. Verse uh, 18. Verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in. Because ultimately that's what overthrows your face. The lust of other things entering in. The heresies come. The doctrines come. Because you ain't built yourself up in, in the scriptures. You get pulled away. You get overthrown. And you start believing in nonsense. Uh, all right, finish that. Was that it? And the lust of other things entering in, choke the word. The lust of other things entering in, choke the word. Come on. And it becometh unfruitful. And now you become unfruitful, unprofitable. Watch this. Give me first Peter's one. First Peter's one. And start at verse three. The book of first Peter chapter one and verse three. Come on. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Which, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So that's our hope. We, it says, blessed be the Lord God of our Father, blessed be the Lord God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again into a lively hope. That's where our hope and our faith is. Come on, read on. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Read. To an inheritance incorruptible. To an inheritance incorruptible. That's what our forefathers understood. That's why you don't be afraid of them that can kill the body. You don't be afraid uh, uh, of the powers of this world. Because we know we're going to rise incorruptible. We got, a, we got an incorruptible body waiting on us if we endure, keep God's commandments. Read on. To an, inherit, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. And undefiled. Come on. And that fadeth not away. And it don't fade away. It ain't going nowhere. Read on. Reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for us. Come on. Who are kept by the power of God. Who are kept by the power of God. Read. Through, the, through faith. Through what? Through faith. Through faith. That's how you're kept by the power of God. Through faith. But the <laughs> only way your faith can be there is by what? Your application, your study. I'm going to say it again. Your application and your study. Come on. Through faith unto salvation. Study, ready. pray, apply. Bishop say it all the time. That's how, that's how you are kept through the power of God through faith. 
Because the only way to have faith, remember, faith, Christianity to have you believe in faith is this mythical uh, 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 thing in the world is just in, in, in the cosmos. No, faith always was followed by action through our, with our forefathers. Their faith caused an action. Same thing with us today. Our faith is supposed to cause an action. It's supposed to cause us to do something. And that's something that we're doing is keeping God's commandments. That's right. Read on. Read verse uh, 5 again. Who are kept by the power of God Come on. through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. It says we are kept by the power of God unto faith and to salvation, ready to be revealed, revealed in the last time. Understand that. It's ready to be revealed. It's just waiting on us to be sealed. Remember, he said, hold back the four winds until my servants have been sealed. Understand that. Read on. Verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice. Mm. Though, Wherein ye greatly rejoice. Read. Though now for a season. You understand that? It says, though now for a season. And that's what we got to understand. The trials and tribulation that, that, that we're going through and that's to come is only but for a season. A lot, I'm telling you, a lot of brothers will give up everlasting life for five minutes. And, that, and, that's, that, and that's, on a, that, that's on a good day. So, y'all, it's two minutes for, for, some, for some rotten coochie. I'm telling you, you'll give, up, you'll, give, you'll give up the whole eternal life. It's just for, that's why I said, read that verse again. Verse 6, wherein ye greatly rejoice. Though now for a season. Though now for a season, need read. If need be. If need be, read. Ye are in heaviness. Ye are in what? You, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. We're in heaviness through manifold temptations because it is flesh. But we're supposed to endure that all the way unto death. Read on. Because it's only for a season. It's for a short span in reference and comparison to eternity. That's how your mind got to think. This time is small and compared to what's to come and compared to the kingdom and to compare to everlasting life. A hundred, uh, let's, let's say a hundred years ain't nothing in comparison to eternity. A thousand years ain't nothing in comparison to the, 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 the amount of time we've been in captivity ain't nothing in comparison to everlasting. Because that don't end. Read on. Verse 7. That the trial of your faith. That the what? That the trial of your faith. The trial of your faith. And that's all of us. All of our faith is on trial. That's why you got to make sure, you got to give the earnest heed to make your calling and election sure. Because we are in the trial of our faith. And how you build your faith up is through your meditation of God's laws, this Bible. Read on. That the trial of your faith being more precious than of gold that perisheth. It says your, the trial of your faith should be more precious than gold that perisheth. Read. Though it be tried with fire. Though it be tried with fire, read. Might be found unto praise and honor. that's what we, we want to we be found unto praise and honor. We don't want to be like that second and third, first, second, and third Israelite that have no root, that get choked out, and then we're chaff when Christ returns. We want to be found unto praise and to honor. Read on. And glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And glory when Christ appears. Read on. Whom having not seen, ye love. Mm. And whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing. It says, of whom having not seen ye love, and in whom, though now ye see him not, ye believe. Because we ain't seen the prophets. We ain't seen Christ walk the earth. We ain't seen all the miracles and, and, and all the marvelous works that was done. But we believe. Watch this. Get, uh, get that in 2nd uh, Ezra's. What is that? 2nd Ezra's 1? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, get that. Get that. 2nd Ezra's 1. 2nd uh, Ezra's one. Verse Saying the same thing. Uh, let me look at it. I think it's verse 35. 35. Yep. The Read book that. of Second Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 35. Come on. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come. Come on. Which not having heard of Understand me. Understand that. We are the people that could come. That, uh, that was to come. Who have not heard of thee. Read on. Yet shall believe me. But we believe. Come on. To whom I have showed no sign. Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. We didn't see no signs. We didn't see people raised from the dead, people being healed, fire coming from heaven, the Red Sea parted. But we believe. Read on. Verse 36. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance. We ain't seen no prophet, but we call our sins to We didn't see Isaiah, Jeremiah, 
Not while, not while they walked the earth as Isaiah and Jeremiah, but we call our sins to remembrance. Why is that? Because the spirit of Christ is on the earth and he has his elect. That's why we got to give the most earnest heed. Go back. Go back. We almost done. Go the book back. of First Peter chapter 1 and verse 8. Come on. Whom having not seen, ye love. And whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It says you, it says you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of joy. This is your faith. Because we had seen none of these things. It takes faith to believe in the words that's in this book. It takes faith. And then guess what? Those that build their faith up, guess what happens? This Bible starts to become clear. You start, that's why you see the bishops and the deacons, they're bringing out prophecies and bringing out certain things that are coming to pass. <laughs> because that faith that they have through the application and studying of God's laws. And that's that joy that all of us are supposed to have. Read on. Verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation it says of your receiving soul. receiving the end of your faith understand how it, listen to how it went through faith it started with uh the uh where was it at uh we were kept by the power of god through faith then you go to the trial of your faith receiving the end of your faith the end of your faith is what read even the salvation of your soul that's the end of your faith the salvation of your soul that's where your faith is supposed to end is the salvation of your soul not, not you going back into the world. That ain't the end of your faith. You wasn't faithful. You, was, you didn't endure. The end of your faith is you being delivered. Read on. Verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. And guess what? The same salvation the prophets inquired and searched diligently. We just read an example of our forefathers in 2 Maccabees 7. Read on. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. And guess what? You. They prophesied of the grace that should come unto us. We're the you. It says that they shall prophesy uh, 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 of the grace that should come unto you. Read on. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. Come on. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ. Read. And the glory that should follow. That's why. This has always been, pro that's why when you read 2 Maccabees 7, that's why I said pay attention to the words. Listen to how they're speaking. This has always been the understanding, the faith that we have, the, the, uh, the application of God's laws. That's what builds your faith, and that's what causes your belief. Matter of fact, get that in 2 uh, Ezra 9, 2 Ezra 9, verse 7. Watch this. Because remember, we just said, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Get that in 2 Ezra 9. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 7. And everyone that shall be Christianity saved. Christianity will make you think faith started with faith. Oh, well, faith only came after Christ died. Now we have faith. No. Our, our forefathers searched diligently of the grace that was to come. And they understood faith. That's why you read Hebrews 11. It tells you Abraham, by faith, he moved how he moved. Abel, by faith, he moved how he moved. Our forefathers always moved like that. Read that, 2nd Ezra uh, 9, verse 7. Verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. It says everyone that shall be saved and be able to escape. Escape what? The coming destruction. Matter of fact, let's read that. Uh, jump up to verse 2. Verse 2. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 2. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time Wherein the highest will begin to visit the world begin, which he made. Will begin to visit the world which he made. Read on. Therefore, when there shall, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people this is in the world. the same thing we read in Matthew 24 earlier. Ezra is saying the same thing. There shall be roars and uproars of the people and earthquakes. Read on. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee. Come on. Even from the beginning. Even from the beginning. Come on. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and end, and the end is made and manifest. the end is made manifest. Read. Even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings. the times of the highest have plain beginnings. Read. And wonders and powerful works. And wonders and powerful works. How the beginning was created. When you read Genesis 1. 
uh, 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 Proverbs 8 and how things was created. It had, pow- it had uh, beginnings in wonders and powerful works. Watch this, read. And endings and effects and signs. And endings and effects and signs. Endings. Certain things I had. That's why I said when you start to see wars and rumors of wars and, and nations shall rise against nation, know that the end is near. Read on. Verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved. And it says everyone that shall be saved from that destruction. Read on. And shall be able to escape by his works. shall be able to escape by what? By his works. By his works. Your application of God's laws. Read on. And by faith. And by what? And by faith. Because that faith is what's going to cause you to apply God's laws. Read. Whereby ye have believed. And all that is how you believe. That that was always the understanding. Don't let Christianity fool you and thinking, oh, you know, if faith didn't come until Christ. No, that has always been the understanding of our forefathers. They always had the understanding that faith works in where we believe. Go back. First Peter's one. Read verse, verse eleven again. Verse eleven, the book of First Peter, chapter one, and verse eleven. Read. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. Come on. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ mm. and the glory that should follow. And the glory that should follow. So watch this. Uh, last scripture. Go to here. Romans 10. Got to end it here. Romans 10. Romans 10 and 17. The book of Romans chapter 10. In verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing. So all we read sums up into this. Faith cometh by hearing. Come on. And hearing by the word of God. And your hearing is only by the word of God. So your faith will only come through studying, praying, and applying. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So all praises be to the Most High God. I pray y'all got some understanding of today's class. Y'all stay tuned. We got the uh, uh, noon class up next. Y'all stay tuned. All praises be to the Most High God. Shalom. Most High Christ bless.